Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a color wheel so you can interactively just um, play around with um, yeah, some colors and this will be applied in a circular manner and you also have controls to fade out um, like this. And yeah, you will have a look into more controls. And we will do this in a COP context, but it could also happen in pretty much any coordinate space. So let's go to make sure you're in composite view and in the image context, where you can just set up an image network. And we're going to call this color wheel. Inside what we need is a generator. So take the VOP COP2 gen generator. And first of all, we should define the size. I will take something quadratic. And in there you'll find lots of inputs. And um, the only things we are needing is X and Y. X is a horizontal gradient ranging from 0 to 1 and y is a vertical gradient. So what do we do is we can uh, first of all um, move these values and shift them because 0 is down here we want to offset it by half to the right and by half to the top. And this works by using a constant subtraction so you'll see now if we just move it by half then we are right in the center and we will do this for both directions so y and x get the same treatment here so you can tell that this is the center of our image but we would like to use both components to create a wheel so there's the arc tangents we can use for this. Just feed in both components and we will get a, um, let's call this a gradient that is cut off here. You can see this is going super bright and this is going below dark. You can tell by pressing I and you will see the values here. They are starting at 0 here and then going up to 0 0.67, 0 0.1 already and then all the way down until pi is reached or minus pi. So what we would do is we would take a fit range and just make this happen between minus dollar pi and dollar pi. And in case this doesn't work, you have to switch the expression language to HScript and also make sure the expressions are set accordingly. So this would be a full gradient from 0 to 1. Now the idea is of course to bring this to a color ramp. So you would choose ramp parameter and just put this in between. So you can call this color if you like or colors. And when you go up you'll see that this gradient appears so we just choose infrared to see something. Now the reason this is only applied to the red channel yet is because we are trying to feed a vector into a float value so we should use the vector to float conversion so it's split up and we have to feed this into R, G and B to make it work. So this would be a circle again the arc tangents is crucial here and um, now we want it to have also a bit of um, a 
um, ring going on. So what we would do is we would convert our x and y component to a vector early on. So x and y are filled and we just want to measure the length of this vector. So this is basically the distance from the center outwards. So you can see this here by just plugging this into our vector. And this is starting at zero and it's um, just rising to the square root basically, or up to 0.5 if you go upwards. And this is also what we're going to use. Now, what else can we do? We can have a look at the arctangents again. And we want to use this range from minus pi to positive pi by just putting this into a cosine function. And you can already tell by the symbol that this is going up and down. So let's just bring this in. And you can see this actually works. So we're starting off with a zero going to one and then all the way down to zero again. And in the black area, you see we go below black until minus one. So our range is minus one to one. And this again can also be used in a fit range. So we could say minus one to one. And that way we again have all the space covered with a gradient. Now what's interesting is we can additionally uh, try to combine, first of all, this gradient that is uh, radial together with this one, which is you know, behaving uh, differently. And we can use this into a smooth function. Let's see what I mean by this. Um, this is basically the color we want to um, mix against another color. So bring this in the secondary input, feed this into our final vector. And at the moment, this is mixed 50-50 against this color, which we mm, can also set to white if we like. And we will use later on our length, for example, as bias. So we can mix between this color and the other one. Let's just promote this color. I'm not quite sure actually what I did here. I was talking about this rather. And um, yeah, of course, this gradient is a tad too simple for what we want. So we would use a smooth function. And actually define it as something that the amount is worked with between this and this range. So we can really draw a circle here and either make it fade out or make it rather strict. And I make it fairly strict, but I just want to use this um, just to make sure our edge is not looking too crisp. I want to uh, avoid aliasing artifacts. So that's what this smooth function is good for. But again, we still have this issue that we would like to use also this kind of um, yeah, um, fading. So what we can do here is we can use a smooth function again, but this time based on the length. This would be our amount. Let's just visualize this real quick. So now I could just define the outer range of our ring.
And you can tell when I play around with the roll off that we can go from very blurry to rather strict. And this roll off should change over our journey around this circle. And this can be coming from our cosine function. So we would just feed this into the roll off. And you can see this is very crisp and then it's fading out. So just what we want and we still are in full control of the radii. And if we're unhappy with the way this changes, we can still kind of um, use a um, fit range function here. So we can go slightly below minus one. And then you see this artifact down here disappears. So this is what it was like before. And if you don't like it, just go below minus one. All right, now let's uh, go again into our black and white masks. So this was the first one. And this means black has no color and white brings the rainbow colors. So in here, it's unfortunately the other way around, we want the black area to be filled with this rainbow colors and the white one should not be. So we need to invert this and this works by using the complement node, which just flips these colors around. So the best way to combine both masks is simply by multiplying. So only the bright parts will remain where both inputs are white. So this will look like this. So let's dial this in. We should take the fit ranges again, or in this case, excuse me, rather the smooth nodes. And we can just make this slightly touch and make this fade out like so. The roll off should be okay, but of course you can take all sorts of liberties there. and then feed this into our bias. And then the color mix finally into this. And make sure you're actually hitting bias. All right, this should be now the time to play around a bit, make this fade out even more. And to make the colors match down here, you would just go up and if you want this color to remain red then you should also set this to red so they actually go all around the circle if you feel like it you can also expose some of these parameters for example if you want to change the radii you can say i want to have this value paste it right below and give it a little tolerance value. So you can define the sharpness here. This looks a bit too crisp and this starts to look okay. And any other values you find interesting, such as this slider can be just promoted by clicking into promote parameter. If you want to have a look at um, the file in, in more detail um, with all sorts of little notes to understand better what's going on, you can download this by going to the Otfos forums and just download the color wheel hip file. Thank you for watching.